Welcome to the Austin Forum Upload, the podcast of the Austin Forum on Technology and Society. I'm Jay Boisseau, the Executive Director and Founder of the Austin Forum, and also the host of this podcast. And I'm very happy to have with me today to start the new year, Hugh Forrest, the Chief Programming Officer and Co-President of South by Southwest. Hugh, thanks for joining us again this year. Jay, it's always great to talk to you and always great to uh, talk to the Austin Forum community. And did you have a good new year? I did. I did. I had a, a great new year um, and excited about all things ahead for 2024 yourself. I had a great New Year's Eve. As you know, we we bought the bar in the building downstairs and we had a wonderful New Year's party. And I started the new year with all these great hopes of getting off to a roaring start to it and everything. And then promptly came down with one of the many viruses circulating around the country or cedar fever or some combination or something. So if my voice is a little raspy today, that's why. Yeah, well, uh, you know, we have resolutions, then life hits, right? <laughs> that's right. Um, well, looking forward to talking about South by Southwest 2024 with you. As I've mentioned to you before, our episode about uh, previewing South by Southwest 2023 was our most popular episode of the Austin Forum upload last year. So I'm counting on us making this one even more listened to. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. No pressure there. And, no, uh, no pressure at all. <laughs> we'll, we'll, you know, we'll see what we can do, right? Right. Well, I'm going to start with the same question that I that I always start with in this when I talk to you about South by Southwest, which is, is there anything new about the structure or format, the uh, tracks, festivals, et cetera, that you want to highlight right at the start about South by Southwest 2024's edition? Definitely. Uh, you know, we we always are tweaking the formula, trying to improve the formula, uh, uh reading, digesting, thinking about attendee feedback and uh, trying to to uh, create an event that's that's um, better for everyone. So some of the, the uh, format changes for 2024, we have a longer tech industry track with tech, the tech industry being so much of what is uh, what is at the core of South by Southwest. That now runs throughout the entire conference. So it begins on Friday, March 8th and runs through end of day on Friday, March 15th. So full eight days there. Um, for context, the other track that runs for eight days is the culture track. So that, you know, kind of <laughs> gives you uh, some some uh, baseline of the, the two big, big elements of uh, South by Southwest, which are uh, tech industry and culture. Uh, we've also added three new tracks to the mix for 2024. Um, those three, to no one's surprise, one is an AI track, um, so uh, concentrated um, content on AI uh, within that track. Although there will be a lot of AI stuff uh, throughout the uh, throughout other tracks, how AI impacts uh, the the film and movie industry, how AI impacts music, how AI impacts food, how AI impacts climate change, how AI impacts transportation, yada, yada, yada. But again, a, a uh, one track that, that focuses on that. We also have a creator economy track, um, uh, which, you know, uh, ties in well with South by Southwest and so many um, uh, people in the music industry and to some extent people in the film and TV industry are also kind of consider themselves creators. So it, it goes well with the convergence aspect of South by Southwest. And then we have a fashion and beauty track, which is new for 2024 also. Um, and we'll have some AI content within that fashion and beauty track. So again, always um, uh, adding uh, new elements. We'll have more workshops for 2024. Workshops tend to be longer sessions that um, offer hands-on, in-depth learning Um and we had about 40 of those in 2023. That number increases to about 60 for 2024. So again, more opportunities for people to get that kind of in-depth learning. And then um, something we've done before, but uh, probably in a more robust form for 2024, is we have a uh, something called EDU Crossover Day. That happens on Thursday, March 7th. And what that means is anyone with any kind of South by Southwest badge, whether, whether that be platinum, interactive, music, our film can go to EDU content on Thursday, March 7th. And EDU is, uh, of course, the event that's been around for about 10 years, which focuses on 
innovation and new ideas in uh, the education space uh, has proven to be a very popular event. So um, that'll be a great opportunity for people to get even more content, even more learning, even more networking at South by Southwest 2024. Wow, that's a lot of new. So I'm very excited about, I'll say almost all of it, super excited about the longer tech program, super excited about the AI track and AI permeating so many things. Probably my only bit of nervousness is that I usually took some consolation in the tech program being from Friday through Tuesday, and then being able to enjoy, enjoy films in the South by Film track for the remaining four or five days. And it sounds like now I'm going to be going to tech program events for about sounds like eight or nine days inclusive now yeah well but uh you know there will be that that <laughs> option to attend all that tech related content but as as always at south by southwest we encourage or strongly strongly encourage you to <laughs> to you know stretch your boundaries and go to things that you didn't realize you had any interest in and create new connections and new ideas that way yeah that's the advice that i've slowly uh, well, I learned from you years ago and slowly assimilated because there's just so much great content. You have to get over the fact that you're not going to be able to see all of it and just in, pick the pieces that you you're, that you're, are key to what you're trying to achieve, that you have a program going in, there are certain things you want to do, and then embrace the changes, the spontaneous interactions, the the content that you maybe normally wouldn't have thought would have been relevant, but try new things mixed in with the things you're expecting to. So it sounds like I'll have great tech content to go to for the entire week, and I'll have to mix in the culture track is also the entire week. It sounds like now I can go to the EDU conference the day before as well. So I've never been to South by EDU, so I'm looking forward to that as well. Yeah, and and remember, Jay, that it is JOMO, not FOMO. Uh, it is not fear of missing out. It is joy of missing out. So <laughs> JOMO is the word. All right. Well, with that uh, information about the festivals and tracks, what are a couple of the technologies that have bubbled to the top in terms of lots of interesting content around them? I and obviously one is AI. Yeah, certainly AI. Um, and we saw that in the panel picker process over the summer, which is when anyone in the community can enter speaking proposals. And, you know, the, by far the most speaking proposals focused on AI. Um, there was a lot of AI stuff in 2023. Again, even more stuff in 2024. Um, what's also, you know, interesting and exciting is a lot more quantum stuff in 2024. We had some of that in 2023, um, more in 2024. Mostly that is within the tech industry track. Um, our friend William Hurley, uh, did a great presentation in 2023, hoping to have him back in 2024 talking about quantum. And I think that, uh, you are going to be talking about quantum in 2024 so that'll be that'll be great also yeah i'm super excited about that panel i've got <clears throat> leaders in quantum computing from ibm and ion q and uh, hyperion research the leading analysts covering the field so it should be a interesting conversation we're going to talk about you know why this is real and why it's revolutionary and why right now is the time to start looking at it it may not be mainstream yet it won't be mainstream for several years still but there are absolutely some early impressive results that are worth taking note of, and it's going to be a long learning curve. So with something so revolutionary, it pays to get out ahead of it, and now is about the right time for it. So very excited about all the quantum information and sessions that I saw in the South by program. So thanks for making, well, <laughs> for whatever role you played, thanks for making sure lots of that is in the program. And I look forward to meeting all these quantum computing and also quantum networking and quantum sensing professionals that I expect to be at South by Southwest this year should be fun. Yeah, it should be fun. And it's, uh, you know, I think it's neat that uh, there's a strong Austin presence in that, uh, the quantum content. Uh, we talked about Worley. We talked about your session. We will also have Scott Aronson, who leads the quantum program at UT. Um, he will be involved. So that's really neat. Um, and, and as you say, I, I think that quantum is, is, the next big wave. Um, but it always, you know, South by Southwest is where you learn about the next big thing, um, right. whether that's the technology, whether that's music, film, culture. So uh, it's a perfect fit for the event. Other things that we'll be covering um, a lot of within the tech uh, content at South by Southwest 2024, we have a lot of cybersecurity stuff. Um, 
including the the chancellor of University of Texas talking about uh, job opportunities in the cybersecurity field. Um, we'll be doing more, uh, we'll be doing a lot of Web3 content. Um, uh, we have a lot of space content again for 2024. Most of that is in our 2050 track, but that is always incredibly popular with our audience. Um, we have uh, a lot of content on tech hotspots uh, around the U.S. and around the world, emerging tech hotspots. I'm particularly excited about a, a session we have with four folks from New Zealand talking about um, what the tech scene is there. Um, and then a lot of sessions, which are, again, always popular with the South by Southwest community on uh, what kind of trends we should be seeing in 2024 and 2025. That ranges from the Amy Webb session, um, which is always one of the most popular sessions at South by Southwest. What's cool about uh, uh, Amy Webb's participation in 2024 is um, her company is also leading a couple of workshops on um, futurism, how to forecast and think about the future. So that'll be great. Uh, but there are a, a number of other sessions that are about uh, trends as well, including one from the publisher and CEO of the MIT Technology Review talking about the, their big tech breakout trends for 2024. We actually had that in 2023. It was very popular. So excited to have that back in 2024. Yeah, I'm hopeful that this will be the year I finally get to see Amy Webb's tech trends talk. <laughs> the line is always so long. And last year, I, I went an hour early. And an hour before her talk, the line was the longest line I've ever seen in my entire life for anything. So did not <laughs> come on, Jay. That is not quite true. Actually, it was a long was, line, but <laughs> no. By by that point, it stretched up up the floors of the convention center, down the hallway, across that stairwell, down some stairs into that adjacent space. It was an incredibly long. I mean, kudos to to, to the content, but uh, and the excitement. But it was so long that they eventually came around and said, "Hey, no one beyond this point." Is yeah. going to get in, and that was nowhere near the end of the line when they uh, said that first. So, great! It's a high in demand session, so uh, it's great. I'm gonna, I guess I'm gonna go two hours early this year. <laughs> well, she is, uh, you know, she's been involved with South by Southwest for a decade, if not more, doing this uh, session, and it again is incredibly popular in terms of preparing uh, or letting our attendees understand what what the future is. Um, again, if you don't get into that session for 2024, if you don't feel like getting there two hours in advance, there's <laughs> other opportunities to take advantage of, of, uh, her learnings via these workshops. It's also kind of cool that, um, we had our first ever South by Southwest Sydney in October, 2023. And Amy was one of the, the keynotes there. Um, and it was amazing. <laughs> it was, uh, maybe not the longest line in the world in Sydney, Australia, but it was, uh, you know, the, the buzz from what she has created in Austin certainly extended across the Pacific. And there was huge, uh, huge interest, huge crowds for, for that session. And a lot of really interesting information that, uh, she dispensed then. Well, um, look forward to that. And also I wanted to ask you, in addition to those technology topics that are going to be covered, what are a couple of the emerging technology topics that you're most excited about or anticipating seeing some uh, interesting content at at South by 24? Uh, you know, I think one of the 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 most exciting um, uh, emerging ideas for 2024. Um, is that we will see, or we should see the release of the Apple Vision Pro uh, in February. This is, uh, for for listeners who are, are not familiar with, the, with this, this is Apple's initial entree into the um, AR, VR, MR, XR space. Um, it is going to be very expensive as an initial en entree, so uh, entry, so it will, um, you know, have some limited uh, audience there, but uh, we think that it will probably jumpstart uh, overall interest in um, the XR industry. And, and we've been doing an XR track at South by Southwest for maybe four or five years. I think that, uh, again, the, the, presence of this new technology um, will uh, create even more interest in that XR track. Uh, it's interesting that I got an email yesterday from 
just out of the blue from someone who's uh, wanted to, you know, could, can they get on the schedule to talk about what new opportunities they are seeing with the Apple Vision Pro um, for technology professionals? Um, I said, we're very full at this point, but maybe we can make space. But again, you know, that that is certainly an emerging um uh, emerging technology that we'll see, I think, um, a lot of interest in for South by Southwest 2024. Some of the things that are also, um, you know, continue to uh, uh, have interest that that are relatively new emerging. Um, you know, we've had a climate change track uh, at South by Southwest for 2024, and a lot of that, con uh, we've had a climate change track at South by Southwest the last few years, uh, what I hope that we're showcasing a lot of within that climate change track is new technologies that can help mitigate the impacts of, of uh, climate change, whether they're startups, whether they're established companies that are doing new things, whether they're new ways to you know, create the food we need that are less damaging to the environment. So um, that content has proven very popular over the last few years, and I think it will be continue to be uh, popular in 2024. We continue to have a psychedelics track in in uh, at South by Southwest. Um, and you may say, well, that's a hard stretch on technology. Yes, it is. But there are uh, entrepreneurial opportunities there. There are lots of opportunities for um, new innovations in healthcare uh, with uh, psychedelics. So again, that's something that's been very popular as well. And you're going to continue the strong health and med tech track at South by, I assume. Yeah, uh, we've been doing health and med tech for roughly a decade. Um, it has always been very popular. Um, there is certainly a ton of crossover between the tech industries, uh, tech industry and the health and med, med tech industry Um at this point, and certainly uh, fits in well with where Austin is at present, with, one with the Dell Medical School, and two with the new MD Anderson um, facility that's being built where the Irwin Center used to used to be. And I always, you know, I, I say that because I always say that South by Southwest is a very strong reflection of what is hot and trending in Austin. And the fact that the, the health and med tech industry in Austin is um, <clears throat> getting more and more robust um, is something that we see it South by Southwest. And, and, and I will also say that, you know, um, uh, the, we see more and more stuff in the natural sciences industry in Austin. And a lot of that is, in, is reflected in the health and med tech track at South by Southwest as well. Yeah. I remember last year that uh, Johnson and Johnson, just to name one of the uh, companies that participated in that, they rented out a pretty large room in the convention center to showcase robotics technologies and imaging technologies and various other technologies. And it was inundated with people the entire time. There was just a tremendous amount of different technology applications showcased in it and a huge interest by people in seeing these different technologies and how they relate to health and medicine. And I, I'm, I look forward to seeing that track continue to increase. And like you said, it's reflective of the growth in this sector in Austin. So I'm, I'm excited to see what happens over the the next five and 10 years in Austin in this space as well. Yeah. And, and that's interesting that you mentioned the Johnson and Johnson stuff. I will say that the health and med tech uh, track is the one that we always have the most interest in from uh, uh, corporate partners doing what we call partner programming, um, trying to, uh, you know, talk about the the innovative stuff that they're doing and, and reach um, our audience that way. And, and a lot of really neat stuff that, um, is showcased to South by Southwest attendees that way. Well, let me ask if there's anything that surprised you about the submissions this year. I know you have your finger on the pulse of this, and <laughs> whereas ratios of entries in different areas may change or evolve as technologies emerge and become pervasive, was there anything that surprised you about the submissions this year? Uh, I mean... <laughs> I think we anticipated, or I know we anticipated that AI would be incredibly popular, and it was. Um, I think what what so that was not necessarily surprising. What was surprising is we had a a or uh, pretty surprising is just we had a huge bump in total number of entries received this year. We're back to about 
uh, nearly 5,000 total entries. That's the most, certainly, since uh, pre-pandemic. Um, so I think is indicative of um, general buzz and interest about South by Southwest. I think it's also uh, fascinating, uh, not entirely unsurprising, but how many of those entries are from outside of the the uh, the U.S. Um, from international innovators who want to be involved with South by Southwest. Um, and I think the the other thing there is uh, just the 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 number of different kinds of industries that we're getting proposals from now. I think one of the the big benefits of the panel picker process is just it's opened up the event to, again, all kinds of different industries that are using new innovative processes, thinking about what they do in new and different ways. That's led to, you know, so many different tracks. Um, and it, I think, continues to make the content New, fresh, compelling helps us pivot into to new ideas, new um, areas of focus that uh, again uh, resonate with our community. You, you mentioned the pandemic in there, and I went last year, of course, and I felt like the energy had returned to pre-pandemic levels. But I have no idea of the numbers and things. I just felt like the energy and the amount of people I was around uh, had returned to that. Is that what you're saying that? South by Southwest 2024 is going to reach the same kinds of numbers in submissions and attendance and corporate partner interest and activations all around the city and things like that. Is it is it pretty comparable now to 2019 and what you expected for 2020? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's hard to, you know, the patterns of our, our signups, our registration, our ticket buying have changed dramatically over the last um, five to 10 years. Part of that has been because of uh, we have so many more downtown hotels now. And it used to be that people had to register very early if you wanted to get a downtown hotel. Now it's, um, again, you've got more options, so you have you can uh, wait. And, and two, uh, because of the pandemic where people, you know, you don't know what's, there's a feeling that, you know, something could happen next week. Um, so people, I think, wait longer to register than they may have in previous years. That said, we're, uh, you know, when, as we tape this in early January, we're, we're trending really well. I think it'll be a robust, active crowd. Um, one of the things that I heard in a meeting yesterday is about almost 35% of our badge holders that at this point are from outside the U S. Um, uh, so again, that, that is reflective of that strong international interest. I think that number will come down because the international folks do tend to register earlier. Um, whereas the, the late comers or the relative late comers tend to be people in the U S who don't have to, uh, plan quite as extensively on the travel. But again, I mean, that, that is one of the most exciting things about the event in my mind is that it brings together so many people from so many different parts of the, the world um, who are, you know, innovative, creative, um, who want to learn, want to network, want to create new ideas and create new opportunities. Yeah, that actually reminds me of a great story from South by last year. I'm, of course, I go mostly to the tech program and then try to see as many films as I can. But in, in the spirit of meeting people and networking and, and embracing different people from around the world and different ideas. I ended up spending part of one day on a boat cruise on Lake Austin with musicians uh, during the conference. They had a, a sponsored event on a lake cruise and I just met them at one of the randomly at some, I think it was actually at a restaurant between sessions or something like that. And they were wonderful. They were from Mexico. They, were, they weren't in any of my tracks or doing any of the same things, but it was just one of those wonderful spontaneous interactions. And we've actually stayed in touch Said. So I, I look forward to meeting all these folks from around the world as well as uh, around the country. And of course, seeing a lot of my Austin colleagues. Um, nice. Let's... Well, I will say that, you know, I, I think that um, on the one hand, uh, I you've heard me say this before. I encourage people to, you know, plan out their South by Southwest schedule fairly extensively before the event begins. But I also encourage, you know, I also think that be open to these, uh, whatever happens when someone invites you to a, uh, cruise on Lake Austin and they're musicians from a foreign country. Yeah. Do it. See what happens. <laughs> Create some neat opportunities. Well, speak, we're now to the advice question. So building on that, what is the advice you have for techies 
during South by Southwest. In addition to what you just said, what's your advice for people who are new to tech or who are experienced tech professionals or who are tech startup folks or or maybe C-level execs at established tech companies? What what other advice do you have? Well, uh, I think repeating something I said earlier is, is um, you know, don't be afraid to go outside your comfort zone in terms of technology or other aspects, or other anything else we cover at South by Southwest. That's the way to, to create new ideas, to create new opportunities, to meet new people, to get, you know, get, get stir up new opportunities. So um, again, if you're fairly familiar with AI and you think you have a pretty good grasp on it, you know, you probably don't need to go to the AI sessions, go to the, the, the web three sessions, go to the cybersecurity sessions, go to the sessions on, on crypto, which, you know, isn't going away. Um, Go to the sessions on quantum. Uh, So, so again, I I always encourage you to, to, or always encourage attendees to, um, consider content that they're not familiar with, go outside their, their, uh, comfort zone. Um, and to what I just said, you know, the event can uh, sometimes be overwhelming. I think the, uh, just in terms of the sheer content in terms of the sheer amounts of people, I think that the best way to guard against feeling overwhelmed is to have some kind of game plan of what you're going to do. Um, uh, but again, always be free to pivot when some other better, interesting opportunity comes up and and um, ride that pivot and see where that goes. Yeah, I like the bit about having a plan and being open to deviations from the plan. Of course, that's good life advice, not just <laughs> self by advice. But it's also the case that some of this content can be seen by attendees after the conference, right? Much of this is going to be recorded and made available to people who have registered to attend, right? Yeah, we will, uh, as we have done for the past 10, 15 years, we will um, live cast uh, the keynotes for 2024. There will probably be some other content we'll live cast. There'll be other content that is taped and available via the, the via YouTube after the event. Um, almost all sessions uh, we make audio recordings of so you can uh, absorb the content um, that way. Uh, so, uh, again, there's, you know, in South by Southwest in many ways, the gift that keeps giving, you can, uh, absorb a lot of this content, uh, after the event. And if you do, you know, get stuck in the massive longest line ever for Amy Webb, you know, you, you remember you can watch it afterwards. It's maybe not quite the same experience as being in the room, but, um, uh, is a pretty good experience nonetheless. And what is your advice for those who cannot attend South by? I mean, the badge is somewhat expensive. People have scheduling conflicts as well. What's your advice for those who live in Austin if they can't attend and for those who don't live in Austin and can't attend? Well, uh, lots of ideas there. If you're in Austin and you... uh, don't think you can afford a badge. You can always consider volunteering. We um, have tons of volunteers at the event. Uh, we are beginning that process for 2024 now. You can find more information on that at volunteer.sxsw.com. Uh, you can come to the Austin Forum and potentially win a free badge uh, for South by Southwest that way. Um, and it's been great to, to uh, have that promotion with the Austin Forum for however many years we've done that um, simply because the content at the Austin forum so, so closely replicates South by Southwest and vice versa. So a couple more opportunities to do that. Uh, There are various local organizations. You can get a badge discount through um, ranging from the Austin chamber, Austin technology council. I don't know if that's possible through the Austin forum now, but maybe you can uh, tell me more on that. Uh, There's also, I mean, you know, if you are crafty and um, <laughs> think about things, there are great ways to take advantage of South by Southwest without buying a badge. I fully think that, I fully believe that having a badge is the best way to absorb South by Southwest, but there are lots of things that are going on in Austin during South by Southwest that don't require a badge. And if you do a little bit of web searching you can find those. And then last but not least, I want to mention that um, for 2024, we will do the same thing that we did in 2023, which was very popular, which is we have a 
the Austin Industry Day at the Creative Industry Expos, which is our fancy name for a trade show. That is on Wednesday, March 13th. And what that means is anyone from Austin or anyone from wherever can get into the trade show, walk the trade show for free on that day, Wednesday, March 13th. The trade show is on the first floor of the Austin Convention Center. It's got a lot of really interesting exhibitors from all over the U.S., all over the world. That's where a lot of the the international delegations have some kind of presence. So um, even if you can't get a badge this year, I would strongly encourage you to, you know, create a two or three hour block in your schedule on Wednesday, March 13th and, and walk the trade show, make some great connections there, learn about new technologies, um, be inspired about the future by uh, doing that. So for the folks in Austin, I heard a few options there and I'll just summarize. One is the trade show floor is open to everyone for free on Wednesday, March 13th. Uh, folks that are local can also volunteer for South by Southwest and that enables them to get badges. They have to work, I assume, a certain number of hours right. and then they can get badge. They get a badge to go see things when they're not volunteering. Um, and that there's a lot of auxiliary things going on around town, activations and events and such that will accept people with or without badges um, during that week as well. And I know people that take advantage of all of these things. So uh, I, I can attest to the fact that you can, you know, the best way to enjoy South by is with a badge, but there are also ways that you can enjoy some of it without. What about the folks who are not in town? How much of the content will be uh, made available in recordings uh, for folks that have not registered and don't aren't local? Uh, there will be a portion of the content that is available as video recordings post event. Um, a lot of the content again will be, or almost all of the, the session content will be available as audio recordings. I will say that we have, you know, when we had our first year back, uh, in March, 2022, first year back post pandemic, we embraced that idea that, a lot of events we're embracing. We're going to be a hybrid event. We're going to be half virtual, half uh, half in person. And I think that uh, what event organizers and what we found is that that's not twice as much work. It's like 20 times as much work. So yeah. it's much less, you know, what we've evolved to in 2024 is, is less a hybrid approach and more a, you know, our bread and butter, our strength is in-person face-to-face connections. But yes, there will be some content that is available afterwards um, for people who who uh, can't attend. And if you can't attend, then uh, that is a great way to to enjoy some of what South by Southwest is all about. Great, great information for everybody, whether they're attending or not. So thank you for all of this. Um, do you have any final words for our listeners about how to find out more about South by Southwest, registering, attending uh, that week in general? Any final words from recommendations? Well, certainly the uh, the most uh, the best source of information about South by Southwest is sxsw.com. Um, also, encourage people to follow us on social media, particularly LinkedIn. Get a lot of great content um, there. Uh, uh, you can always, uh, your listeners can always connect with me, Hugh at sxsw.com. If you have questions about the event and I'll direct you to someone who can answer the questions. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it is a, um, I think South by Southwest is a, a great celebration uh, of all the creativity that happens in Austin year round. It happens at a time of year when uh, spring is springing, uh, when it's not too warm in the day, it's not too cold in the night. Um, it brings all different kinds of people to the city and encourage all your listeners to try to take advantage of all the opportunities at South by Southwest one way or another. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, create some new opportunities and learn some new things and and uh, see what happens when you do that. Well, Hugh, thank you so much for doing this podcast with me today. I am incredibly excited about South by Southwest 24. I'm super excited about all the AI content and the quantum computing content and the longer tech track and uh, the longer culture track and everything. So uh, very, very excited about this. Certainly encouraging all of my friends and colleagues to attend from near and far. So I appreciate all this information for our listeners. Look forward to seeing you around Austin again soon. And thanks for being on the podcast.
Jay, thanks for having me on. Again, it's always fun to talk to you and always great to talk to the Austin Forum community. I appreciate all you do to, to promote the event. And I appreciate all you do to keep the South by Southwest vibe alive 12 months a year with the Austin Forum. So all good. Certainly a pleasure. And South by was absolutely an inspiration for the Austin Forum on Technology and Society and looking forward to our upcoming events. For our listeners, thanks for listening today. I hope to see you at future Austin Forum events and in March at South by Southwest. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for listening to the Austin Forum Upload. You can listen to additional episodes and check out a schedule of our monthly in-person events at austinforum.org. The Upload is a production of the Austin Forum on Technology and Society, a nonprofit organization here in Austin, Texas.